This is something I've heard a lot personally because my mother had a double kidney transplant and used to be constantly worried about stressing her kidneys with large amounts of protein. And they do work to process protein as well as the waste product of protein, which is ammonia. So this is true to some degree, but it's important to understand that approximately 80% of the calories in your diet are supposed to come from an energy source fat or carbohydrates and the idea that Americans eat a lot of protein is a myth you know it's about fear-mongering people into reducing their meat intake so they develop B vitamin and omega fatty acid deficiencies and then the medical industry makes a whole bunch of money kidney disease rates have gone up drastically over the past years and it's hard to find any statistics about disease rates going up because they hide it they hide the fact we are getting sicker but protein intake hasn't changed much. So protein intake hasn't changed and kidney disease rates are going up. Now, one in three people have a chance to develop kidney problems. The hypothesis that high protein diets cause kidney damage is something that was taken from patients that had pre-existing problems with their kidneys. As with many modern medical issues, some doctors took that hypothesis and ran with it. Those principles specifically used for people with poor kidney function and apply them to the general population. Even now, there are studies showing that when a renal disease patient consumes moderate amounts of protein, they have no issues compared to those patients consuming a low protein diet. And even if you did reduce protein with kidney issues, the only thing you're doing from a medical perspective is delaying dialysis for a few months and your body would probably suffer more from the lack of protein. I do want to say that overconsuming protein is going to stress the body in more ways than your kidneys. You know, when you follow a ribeye steak carnivore diet, for instance, and your fat to protein ratio isn't correct, your kidneys, liver, digestive system are working overtime to process the protein and excrete the waste products. You also aren't utilizing the many other digestive enzymes that can be produced by the pancreas and bile from the liver overusing certain organs, underusing others. It's not balanced or healthy to consume an extreme amount of protein. As I said earlier, I think this might just be a scheme to make people unhealthier, reduce the protein content in their diet, correspondingly reducing the B vitamin content. Plenty of studies show that kidney function does not change between healthy adults on a low or normal protein diet compared to high protein, that is, people with healthy kidneys. One other theory I have as to why there are so many rumors that protein causes kidney failure is due to bodybuilders, and I wouldn't call this my theory, I think a lot of people think this. There's no evidence that a high protein diet on its own will cause kidney failure, but an insanely high protein diet that most bodybuilders follow, combined with the performance enhancing drug usage, is certainly adding stress to the kidneys and organ systems, so, it's no wonder there are so many bodybuilders that die from organ failure, specifically the kidney failure. And I want it to be very clear that blaming protein when using steroids is very silly. It's like getting in a car accident driving 150 miles per hour than saying your tires were a little worn out. And consuming excess protein isn't going to give you more muscle. You know, your body only needs a certain amount to build tissue as demonstrated in this study. So if protein isn't causing this increased kidney failure, what is? It's high blood pressure, which is caused by the standard American diet combination of processed carbs, sugar, vegetable seed oils, and feedlot meats, animal products, beef, pork, chicken, and eggs. So I did a video on blood pressure back on January 29th. I go over how the combination of sugar and omega-6 vegetable seed oils cause high insulin, High insulin causes high renin, resulting in high angiotensin. That increases vasoconstriction, tightening up blood vessels, stressing the kidneys, and increasing blood pressure. High fructose in the diet also produces uric acid, which increases blood pressure further. And keep in mind, anything that stresses adrenal hormones can affect this as well, including stimulants like coffee, lack of sleep, too much exercise, all of those can elevate your blood pressure, which will stress your kidneys. But fructose and vegetable seed oils on their own cause people to develop diabetes, leading to poor kidney function. Now the kidney is overworked from processing all of the various metabolites associated with high sugar and omega-6 intake. In addition to that, 
the higher pressure from the blood causes the arteries and the kidneys to narrow, weaken, even harden, not allowing the body to deliver enough blood to that tissue in the kidneys. It's fairly safe to say that if you simply avoid processed foods, sugar, omega-6 vegetable seed oils, as well as conventional feedlot meats, you'll be free from kidney disease or any disease really. I do think most people working out, especially bodybuilders, are consuming high omega-6 foods, are consuming processed sugar, crap foods, and they're in a fairly poor metabolic state where five to 10 scoops of protein per day is certainly negatively affecting their kidneys. On paper, it seems like there may be a concern with a high protein intake, but I haven't been able to come across one case study of renal failure due to overconsuming protein. One interesting factor is that raw meat is far less stressful on the kidneys than cooked meat. We know standard American dieters are obsessed with overcooking their meat. You know, bacon for breakfast that has been heated three times, highly processed deli meats for lunch, and a well done burger for dinner. We're certainly lacking raw animal products in our diets, which should probably account for you know 20 to 40 percent of the calories we're consuming. I haven't looked into the specific mechanism on this, but it's proven in this study. People who ate cooked meat had more stress on various metabolic functions. My theory is that the carcinogens formed on the fried meat and that overcooked meat is stressing the body to produce more enzymes, and it's possibly not as hydrating as raw meat. Either way, the problem is really, really, really well done overcooked meat, not a rare or medium rare steak, as a medium rare steak is closer to a raw steak than a well done steak is to a cooked steak. Uh, can fasting help with this? And I, I think that a lot of people should really experiment with fasting one or two days a week, staying really well hydrated and, and seeing how they feel, seeing how that affects their digestion and overall energy levels, their sleeping patterns. I've done a couple videos on fasting if you guys want to learn more uh, about my opinions on that, including like intermittent fasting and longer fasts. So thank you guys for joining me today. Hopefully this answers your question about protein relating to poor kidney function or the lack thereof. If you guys could please like the video, leave me a comment down below, and of course share the video if you can. If you guys do want to support me further, you know how to do so down in the description. Thanks again for joining me today, guys. I'll see you for tomorrow's video.